Hello everybody, my name is Anthem and welcome to a glimpse of Pike and Shot campaigns, a game by Byzantine Studios. Byzantine Games and the Board Game Studios published by Slytherin LTD. I think that's limited, isn't it? I think so. So what this is, it is a turn-based uh, strategy game based around the Thirty Years' War, which is around like 1550, something around that. Um, so we are basically just going to look at the option menu right now. There's not a lot to it. You got game speed right here. I don't know why you'd ever want to play on anything lower than 100%. Even on 100%, it's the game still feels a little bit slow. You got five difficulty settings from very easy to uh, expert, I guess. The game is pretty hard, even at the just the, I guess the default setting, which is three stars. I still have a you know bit of difficulty actually playing the game. I think I'm saying I'm going to increase the volume slightly on this. You got scroll speed, which I probably want on 100%. Got left and right UI mode, and I don't actually know what that means. Just got to do with the uh, the mouse. You also got the advanced option, you know, sound, full screen, shadows on normal. I mean, it's we have to restart, but you got shadows on high. You got helper mode off, tool tips to use simple. There's a lot of there's a lot of detail you can go in with that uh, with the tool tips. I can show that once we get into like the actual gameplay. Post combat reports also you got detail on and off. I put them. I, I just have them on off because. It's, it, there's a lot of, they pop up every single time there's a melee combat, and there's going to be a significant number of melee combat, so it's kind of annoying. Facing markers, you want that on. Like, I don't know why you'd ever want to turn this off. It just seems like it's objectively the right thing to do, is to keep them on. You got the yellow question marks, which I don't actually know what that does. And you got the compass, and I don't think the compass actually matters at all to have that on or off. You got a you know, bunch of resolution settings here. So we'll advance, or we'll just exit this. You also got a level editor, which is actually pretty um, robust. There's a lot of things you can do in that. And I haven't actually messed around with it too much. And I do have about just under two hours with the game so far. I haven't actually messed around with this, but it does seem like there's a lot that you can do. You also got multiplayer if you want to play online, but I don't have the, my account registered, so I haven't played anything online. So I don't know how good like the net code and the servers and stuff are, or how many people are actually even playing it. I don't know if there's a way to look at that without you know registering the game. You also got a campaign, which is basically a, um, I want to say it's more like a, t like a Total War-esque kind of map mode. Uh, it's a bit disappointing, the Pike and Shot campaign. I'm going to show you why I am disappointed with this, uh, this first campaign mission. You got four here, you got Pike and Shot, which is like the grand campaign kind of thing. The 1494-1559. You got Gustus Adolphus, which takes place in the Holy Roman Empire. You got the English Civil War, as well as the Great Turkish War. So if you go to the Pike and Shot, I'm going to show you why. I don't... You also got a ton of settings, I'll show you. Once this uh once this loads. Yeah, you got you got a bunch of options here. Player side, anti-imperial, pro-imperial, and then you got a ton of countries you can play as. Look at all these look at all these different separate Polish countries. Or Polish armies you can play as. There's a ton. You can also pick your enemies. So th these don't really matter. Um or of course, yeah, let's, we'll just proceed. But my main problem is that this is the map. This is the campaign map for the Pike and Shot campaign. And why am I disappointed with this? Is it one? It's the exact same map. Also, turn the helmet marches off. Never actually seems like it actually does anything. Like they actually just never turn off. I think that might be off. But this is the same map. This is the map for no matter what two countries you choose. This is always going to be the map. And this isn't even a real place. Like none, of the, as far as I know, none of these places are real, which is a bit disappointing. If I wanted to play like a historical game, it's like a raised new army. But um, I don't think I can do anything like that, because I have no points to spend. So let's exit this campaign. But if you do play some of the other ones, like the Great Circus War, for example, you know, this will just launch it right away. I don't care who I choose. It actually is a real map, which is nice. You can Byzantine versus the, uh, the Holy Roman Empire up here. And you can Kiev, which I think is not part of the Holy Roman Empire. That would, that would have been part of, like, Poland, maybe? Back in... Oh, 1682. I don't know who that actually controlled it. Anyway. Oh, see, look, the messengers pop up every single time. It's a bit annoying. Yeah, but these other, these last three campaigns are actually on these maps, which is nice. The Pike and Shot campaign is not on the Europe map, which I don't. But I'm not a you know huge fan. I've also got skirmish right here. Must be load up. And there's once you go to advance, there's a, just a ton of stuff you can mess around with. Turn limits, like how long. I don't know if I can go up to infinite. I, I don't feel like clicking this until I can find out. You got force limits, height of um, the map, I assume, width, height, I don't know what the height and width actually mean. What, what do they tell you what that represents? Not that I can tell. You also got like open battle, reinforcements, you got a ton of different scenario types. You can choose how big you want your army, it's very small, so I'm assuming very large. 
He also got map size very wide. And now these buttons don't work. That's good. Uh, train type are cultural, potluck, mountains, wooded, hilly. And then you can also choose uh, what side you want to be on. And you can also choose, um, you know, go into a little bit more detail with what armies you want to be. So we'll go back here and then we'll also look at the historical, which is basically a bunch of pre made maps. We got the tutorial here, Three Years' War, the English Civil War, the Italian Wars, as well as the Tercio to Salvo, which I don't know what that actually is. Yeah, but these are just a bunch of pre-made maps. Um, if you go to, if you look at the tutorial for a second, you will see that it's not like you're playing the one country throughout. Like the first camp, or the first tutorial mission, you're playing as the HRE. The second one, you know, you play as um, HRE versus Transylvania. And this one, I think you played as Sweden in the first one. You might. It doesn't really, it doesn't really say. But I'm pretty sure you're Sweden here. This one, you're the HRE, and then this one, you're also the HRE again. So you do play different countries within the um, the campaigns. I don't know how long each campaign is because I can only look at the first mission. I can't just scroll through all of them. Or can I? I oh, know I can. As you can see in the, the Holy Roman Empire campaign, there is a ton of maps. And each map can probably last somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes, I would say. Maybe. Maybe even longer. Maybe even half an hour. But I'm just going to open up a quick skirmish just to show the actual gameplay of the game and that'll probably be it for the video. Um, the game is about $40 US, but 44 Canadian. Um, is it worth that price? I kind of want to lean towards no. I do not think it's worth $40. Maybe for like 20 bucks, I might be able to recommend it. For, for 40 it might be a bit much, but we'll just kind of launch. We'll go to the, um... Let's go, let's go to the Italian Wars. Why not? So we'll go with Italy. I don't know why it has to load every single time you choose a new campaign, but it does. We will have a, um, let's, let's just do an open battle. We'll go with a uh, very, not very large, let's go with like this medium, let's go small armies actually. On a very, let's go with a narrow map. Oh, I guess I'm the size of the army actually dictates how big the map is, so. So I want to, let's go with narrow, we'll go with a, uh, let's go mountains. And I will be the allied. I want to be um. Okay, let's let's be let's be the Swiss. We'll fight the French. And um, it's called the auto. We'll create. I'm not gonna mess around with the advanced options. There's a, there's a lot of them, like I like I showed. Okay, so these are going to be our armies. We're gonna have a one skirmisher crossbow. We're gonna have one arquebusier, and four Swiss kills. So there's a lot of units as well. I, I probably could open up the uh, the map maker and show you all the different types of units. I would say there's probably about 50 to 60 different types of units, each one kind of depending on what country you're actually playing as. But we're just going to proceed right away. Yeah. So like I said, I, like these these it's not a big army. So is this on? I do not want the messages on. So there's a bunch of different phases um, in the map. First things first, we're actually just going to get our troops, but as as close to the front line as possible. So apparently that's as close as we can get. I don't like how my uh, my range units are this far out, but we are just going to... Actually, let's look at the map. We got some mountains over here. We got some small towns. We got forests over here, and we are going to end our turn. You press enter at the end of the turn, there's no on-screen button that you can actually press. So it actually took me about like maybe like three minutes for my very first time playing Active Figure of that. At the end of the turn, you have to press the enter button. So we got different phases. You got the residual shooting phase, which is all units that did not shoot in the melee section, or that you didn't shoot before during your turn, will shoot this time. And I don't want the messages on. You also got the melee phase, which is all units that are in melee will fight during this phase. I don't want the messages on. So now it's the French turn. They have a they have a significant number advantage on us. Like that's um. That's a lot of enemies that we're fighting. Why are we fighting so many? You also got a bunch of tooltips over here, like next unit. Makes sense. Uh, next unmoved, which is more useful than next unit. I don't know when you'll ever use next unit as opposed to next unmoved. You just got target uh, line of sight. So these guys, these um, Archibaziers, they can shoot anywhere in the orange and they can see anything that is, um, you know, just one of these squares. I don't think this is super useful. I mean, sometimes you can turn it on to see where the actual range of, like, the cone of fire is, 
That's useful. I wish it only showed the line of fire instead of all the white squares, because that doesn't help me too much. Um, you also got the detailed unit information, so we can see here that they got a close combat rating of 75, shooting attack rating of 40. They have no armor. Um, they shoot short range of four, long range of, or short range of two, long range of four. Effect have at long range, much less effective than firearms. Effective, not reduced against armor. They also have no impact. They cannot fight in the melee phase, apparently. Alright, maybe we can't like charge with them. So let's let's turn that off. You also got the view unit. This shows you all the units you have. I wish we had more units. Like I don't think we have a lot. You can also see the total number. We are totaling 8,600 men. They are totaling 8,900. So apparently these um. Are these armies just like, oh, these armies are like 2,000 people each. Oh, these are actually big pike armies. What's their 441 melee range attack rating? That is extremely high. You also got a casualty list. Well, I guess I already showed this look at the strength. But it shows you strength and casualties. Routing as, or wounded doesn't really matter too much as far as I can tell. For maybe the, um, the Total War style map, wounded might actually make a difference. But as far as I can tell, maybe that has... More people that are wounded might lower morale more than people killed? I'm not 100% sure, and route it just makes people who have just left the map. So, they might as well all just be one giant. Yeah, this is the number down here is really the only number that actually matters if you're playing a skirmish or, I guess, the historical campaigns. Unless the historical campaigns carry over units per mission, but I doubt that's the case. And you also got the top view. I don't really like it. I mean, it could be useful, but I'm not a big fan. I mean... So they have 409, and they do have two cannons, which I don't like. But we are just going to move our troops forward. I wish I could move multiple troops at the same time. That doesn't seem to... I don't think you can do that, which is a bit disappointing. I really wish you could. So we have crossbowmen. I don't want to move these guys too far ahead of the rest of the army. We'll end our turn. I don't think anybody can shoot, yeah. The, the front artillery might be able to shoot us. Yeah, there they go. We're going to do 20 damage. So you might be thinking, like, 20 casualties against the number of, you know, 2,000. That's like a 1% casualty rate for the cannons. But what they really do is lower morale, which is a big deal. If you get the cannon shooting at the same time as, like, riflemen, and it will just decrease morale. Really, you're going to lose morale before you lose all your troops. So our objective is to root the army, root at least 40% of their troops, um, and 20%, 25% more than what you've lost, or root 60% in total. So if we wrote 40% of their army without losing anybody, we win. If we, if, like, at least 40 with 25, if we lose 10%, but they lose, like, 50, we'll also win there as well, because it still, you know, meets the first condition. So we're just going to keep marching forward. Can I see the line of sights on these guys? I can't actually, which is kind of sad. Turn that off because I don't like that on. No, turn that off. We'll close that tool because I don't think it's going to be useful right now until we actually get into actual combat. Can these guys shoot anybody yet? No. Okay. Maybe next turn we can actually do some combat. Any artillery are going to be doing 51 damage now. Ugh. If we can get two of these ar ar like artillery with our pikemen, they're just going to be dead. And they're actually not moving their troops at all. They have no cavalry, which is nice. I don't like dealing with cavalry, but I guess if we have a bunch of pikemen. Did you get, did these guys have like a bonus versus cavalry? Not that it really matters, you know, there's none in here. 100% damage versus any mounted units. Okay. We're just gonna keep marching forward. Don't wanna attack, if you attack up the hill, you get a significant uh, penalty for, um, for attacking. If I go here, will I be able to shoot anybody? There we go. Do 8 damage there. I don't think you're going to be able to get be in range of anything. Yeah, and also there's a mountain in front of us, so that would also be a good reason why we can't uh, do anything there. So I imagine their infantry are actually going to be marching forward now. Also, apparently there was a bird. Did anybody else... What's, what's that chirping noise? Also, they're actually just not... Oh, there they go. I thought they weren't moving forward for some reason. These guys only have 94 melee against our 400, so I... Doubt these uh these you know riflemen are actually gonna be able to do anything against our massive stacks here. And they did just charge it. The crossbowmen actually charge us. Really? 
That's a bit odd. I don't know why you would do that. And there's some melee phase. They're gonna fight each other. There's a bunch of ranged units fighting each other, so... And I don't know why you would do that. If I go here, we can face this guy. And now can we shoot anybody? We can't because there's troops in our way. Okay. 77% chance that we win. Yeah, like, we have just much better. 17 to their 60. And they uh, lost some morale there. 41 to their... Really? Oh, no, those are, those are cavalry. Hmm. Is there anything else we can... Can we charge anybody else? We can, we can move forward. Charge? It's a nice question. We'll charge the cannons and they're dead instantly. Fantastic. We can't attack any of these guys. So if I move here... Oh, let's attack these. Yeah, let's attack the cannons. Get rid of them. You guys can't do anything. And you also can't do anything, so we'll just end our turn. We're only in melee here. I hope this, as long as these, um... Oh, no, they have Swiss kills of their own. These Swiss traitors. They're probably just mercenaries or something. I don't know. Okay, so we routed these guys. One of the main problems with routing... Oh, no, the, the birds are crossbows. That actually makes a lot of sense. The problem with, um... With routing is that when the enemy routes, your units will follow them. So... It, there's a chance that if the enemy goes off screen, off the boundaries of the map, your units will just follow them, which is actually like really annoying sometimes. And our troops are much better than theirs. We're doing way more damage. Except for the, these, um, these guys are not in a good spot right now. Can't really do much to help them though. Is there anything that we can actually do here? There is, a little bit. Okay, you go here. Is there anybody you can shoot? Oh, you can shoot these guys. Do seven damage. That's, you know, a lot. And other than that, you're not fighting anybody. And I don't want to fight you. 99% chance we'll win the charge here. 95 to 7. That's, you know, really good casualties on their side. I mean, it's bad for them. I mean, it's great for us. Let's, uh, we'll lower the tools, I don't think. Okay. I wish I could just retreat these guys. I've seen, like, sometimes the enemy can break off attacks, but I don't know how to actually do that. So they, they broke. Now, what, are you, what are you guys doing? Don't follow them. I, I'd recommend not following them. As long as we... We've already routed 30%. So if we route like one more guy, we will be in charge. You can see there's a plus 30%. So we're about the plus 25% that we need. Oh no, we actually got routed. Oh, did you route? These, are, these guys probably routed this turn. Yeah, where? Come on. Auto breaks. There they go. They're routing now. Now they're gonna have a bunch of guys following them. Oh, there's a crossbowman. Okay, the crossbowman, please, uh. Please don't die. That would be bad for us. See, these guys are charging after them, so we can't do anything with them. I wanna just attack the crossbowman. Sometimes it's odd. I, I can't tell at least 100% why sometimes you can't attack and why sometimes you can. Like, is there anybody right now who I can do anything with? Just a crossbowman. We can face the horses and shoot at them, but you guys you guys are probably dead next turn. Or it might break. We're actually getting a little bit surrounded actually by the French right now. That's not a really great position that we want to be in. 33 to 28. We're not doing as much casualties as I would like. Also, it seems like our Swiss Kells broke off the, the charge. Is these our, are these our Swiss? Or no, okay, that's the French Swiss. Eight. You're, they're both steady, which is a problem. I'm, someone needs to break. They did. They, they broke. Lost both. See, like they only lost like 400 guys before they actually uh, shattered, treated. It's a 21% chance we win that attack. If I, they're facing. Are we facing them? Which way is our um? Okay, you're, you know, okay, we have to face the horses, so that if the horses attack us, they don't attack us from the rear. Actually, these guys might be immune to rear attacks. I know some guys are. I don't, I don't see anything about it, so. 
What's low is that? Is there anybody we haven't moved? These two haven't moved. Is there any 5% chance of the win against the, uh, the crossbowmans? See, I don't like the only th the 6% chance. Oh, the, well, it's, the draw is at 72, so... There's not a huge chance we'll lose, and they are falling back a little bit. Is there anybody else we can do anything with? I don't think so, so we'll end our turn. And they're at 42%, so... We might actually have won. But I think the enemy troops actually have to leave the screen before, because they can regain morale. So they can be routed, and then they get near the end of the screen, and then they get fragmented, and can come back if they want to. So they actually have to leave the screen first. Either that... Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. The residual shooting phase. There's not, many, there's not a lot of ranged units. There's a very melee-focused um, engagement between our armies. Uh, this guy's actually getting he's getting this guy's getting flanked from like all sides and he's actually disrupted right now. Oh, we actually won right there. Fantastic. Do you wish to accept victory? Or we can kill them all. There we go. So we we've won. Um I don't feel like increasing the difficulty, but that right there is Pike and Shot campaigns. It's on Steam right now. It came out about on last Thursday on the on the 13th. Once again, $40 US, uh, 44 Canadian. I don't know what that exactly is in euros. It could be less, it could be $40, because sometimes the Euro American, you know, conversion is like really bad. But thanks everybody for watching. My name is Ben Amos. If you've enjoyed, more of the thumbs up. If not, enjoy, can always thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.